Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 6, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, first of all, thanks to all the listeners and readers that forwarded us these sextortion scams. They essentially claim that they have some compromising material about you, and then they are asking for Bitcoin in order to not publish it. Rick has been collecting all of these emails and he has been pretty diligent in essentially following the money. Where is the money being sent from these scams? And he ended up with five different Bitcoin addresses that received the bulk of the money. One in particular stands out. It ended up with a total of 6.2 million Bitcoins, which translates to about 68, 69 billion US dollars. But before you get excited, like I did initially when I first saw that, uh, that this is actually not all earnings from these scams. Uh, when I first published this on LinkedIn, a follower of mine, Ken Gilmore, commented that this Bitcoin address is actually the address of Binance. Binance is a uh, Bitcoin exchange, so uh, they accumulate funds from different people who are using that particular exchange. Uh, so uh, that's just basically the total amount of money that this exchange received on that address. So this is not all traffic that's related uh, to uh, these scams. But still, the second address received 71 million US dollars worth of Bitcoins and the smallest out of the five, $680,000. Overall, I think the number of these scams that I've seen lately is somewhat decreasing. So let's hope that they sort of reach saturation where people either paid for it or not going to fall for it. Uh, too bad that people do apparently pay for these scams. Well, and then it's this time of the month again where we get updates from Google for Android. The August 2019 security bulletin was released and in addition to the usual fare of media framework, vulnerabilities and the like, uh, we also have five uh, a little bit more interesting vulnerabilities in Qualcomm components. Two of these vulnerabilities sound particularly interesting in that they affect the VLAN or Wi-Fi component and they can be triggered by essentially sending malicious Wi-Fi frames to an affected phone. The vulnerability here is a basic buffer overflow, so exploitation shouldn't be all that terribly difficult. And the Tencent Blade team that discovered some of these issues will actually release a presentation on Thursday at Black Hat, where they promise at least some more details. Qualcomm has been notified a few months ago and has actually itself notified OEMs that are using its components at the beginning of June. So any patches, new drivers and such should be under development or already be released for various handsets. Now, the discoverers uh, didn't, of course, test all possible handsets. There are lots and lots of different handsets that use these Qualcomm components. They did, however, test the Pixel 2 and 3 phone. Uh, this is uh, Google's own phone and well, uh, somewhat sort of uh, standard when it comes uh, to Android. So definitely do apply uh, this patch. It is very possible that an exploit will be released soon. And then we got updates from VMware for VMware ESXi as well as for Workstation and Fusion. Uh, this update fixes two vulnerabilities, one of which has a CVSS rating of 8.5. So these are not sort of must patch now vulnerabilities, but uh, something that you definitely uh, should get addressed uh, relatively soon. The more serious one of them only affects systems that are using the VMware graphics drivers. And it's actually related to the vulnerability I talked about yesterday. Successful exploitation according to VMware could lead to code execution on the host. 
The second one, less severe, but still it does lead to information disclosure and also could allow a normal user to create a denial of service condition. Well, probably not that huge of an issue, but the information disclosure could be interesting. This second issue is related to the 3D graphics function. So if you don't need 3D graphics, you may just go ahead and disable it. Probably doesn't do much for many server systems. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.